Hey, welcome to my lunch hour. Stan, the energy man here. We're going to be talking hydrogen, one of my favorite subjects. And in the background, uh, my guests and I have bicycled all the way out to Makapu Point. And we've got the lighthouse in the background. Unfortunately, the surf is in freeze mode. So, yeah, sorry, we can't do much about that. But it's a beautiful day at Makapu. And I hope you get out there and enjoy some of the surf getting generated by that big easterly uh, hurricane we got churning out there. But speaking of energy, um, I just took uh, some folks from the legislature and from DVET out to our Hickam installation and looked at our hydrogen station out there and talked about the future of hydrogen in the Air Force. And really, that's what I get to do for a living. I get to do hydrogen projects for the Air Force and then share everything that I learned doing that with the folks here that are interested in hydrogen at Blue Planet, at Energy Accelerator, and State Energy Office, and in the private sector. So there's a lot of great, exciting things happening this year in hydrogen. Some of them I, I, I'm not at liberty to expose just yet because it's private sector stuff going on, but there's a lot of great things going on. And one of those great things is my guest today, Chris McWinney from Millennium Rain. He's in the heart of what we would call hydrogen uh, fuel cell country in Ohio, um, in Dayton, Ohio there. If you've never been to that part of the world, I think everything fuel cell and hydrogen originates in in or about Dayton, Ohio, and University of Ohio, and all the folks over there. So, Chris, welcome to the show. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for traveling all the way over here to Hawaii to, to be on the show with us. Thanks for having us. And uh, I know you, you like to come over here and, and work, and we've got yeah. a couple projects on the Big Island that you're involved in. Mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into doing what you do mm -hmm. and starting your own company uh, yeah. with Millennium Rain. Well, we started in, uh, in 2003. Um, uh, I submitted a patent called uh, Residential Hydrogen Power Plant and um, started developing it in a garage and uh, the main component was going to be a, uh, an electrolyzer which uh, takes water and uh, electricity and splits the water into hydrogen and oxygen and capture the, oxy capture the hydrogen and relieve the oxygen into the atmosphere and we um, developed several different models uh, over a period of time in the garage and until we finally got to uh, where we found one that was really rather efficient uh, at uh, using less electricity than normal to split the oxygen and the, uh, uh, hydrogen out of the water. And um, then after we found a stack that was good, we started to build the other balance of plan around it to be able to um, capture the hydrogen and purify the hydrogen and compress it and store it and dispense it. And um, basically our business strategy started out to be able to develop a, um, a system that would be able to allow for a person to store or bottle the wind and the sun for later when there is no wind and sun and be able to be completely energy independent and off the grid uh, by using hydrogen as a storage medium for renewable energy. And um, since hydrogen replaces and can replace uh, gasoline, diesel fuel, propane, natural gas, and can store electricity, it is literally a medium that you can use to um, replace everything that we're doing in energy now with something that's sustainable, green, and, um, uh, and renewable. So because of that, um, you know, that took us down the road of developing a product set. Uh, where now we have 21 different products that we have that are commercially ready uh, to go to market with and to provide scalable hydrogen fueling systems and scalable storage hydrogen storage systems from as little as one kilogram a day production all the way up to 500 kilograms a day production. Uh, I was going to ask if you've kind of expanded to the high end of production. Mm -hmm. I, I know you talked about residentials where you started. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really been one of my pushes, not only here, but when I, when I visit with people on the mainland and Department of Energy, it's like everybody's focusing on megawatt scale production. Mm -hmm. But really, there's a, I think there's a huge market for residential scale. Mm -hmm. And rather than just focusing on one, mm -hmm. maybe we ought to focus on both. Mm -hmm. And so your equipment fits really well mm -hmm. and scales really well mm -hmm. um, to the residential. I mean, mm -hmm. you could, so could you give us a hypothetical model of how your system would fit into a household, a single family household? Yeah, well, um, we like to say that the, the starting point is you must have an origin of energy uh, if you want to be off grid and energy independent. So you have to have either wind or solar or geothermal or, or hydroelectric of some type uh, generating a, a renewable source of ongoing sustainable electricity. Uh, once you have that in place, 
then you need to have a set of good quality batteries um, so that you can have uh, a, um, a storage medium that has very quick amperage uh, uh, that can handle the loads of, 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 a, of a big freezer turning on and off or you know, an oven turning on and off or the heavy loads of, of a home or small business. Um, and but then you don't want to do it. You don't want to do all your storage and batteries because the batteries fill up really quickly. Um, you know, in a couple hours, your batteries are recharged every day. But you had to size your renewable energy system so that you could take care of the loads during the day and charge the batteries. So once the batteries are charged, the electricity that was being generated by the renewable energy system has no place to go. So that's where the hydrogen, yeah, and it, it just sits there. <laughs> and, and so that's where the hydrogen generator creates a load bank and then you can actually store that excess energy now and you now have a backup to your battery system and the storage for hydrogen is much cheaper than storage for batteries. You, you bring up some really important points here because I'm constantly bombarded by people that say, but batteries are more efficient. Mm -hmm. But I think they only look at energy in, in energy out right. formulas and they don't really take into account the cost of the storage, the right. long-term uh, uh, effect of of uh, environmental issues with battery production, you know, Correct. and actually making them. Yep. Um, the the actual limitation, lithium is a limited resource, right? And we don't produce hardly any of it in this country, so right. we, we import all the lithium. So why would we go from importing fossil fuel to importing lithium as a solution? Right. I mean, there's a whole lot of pieces there yeah. that people don't put in the formula. Yeah. But batteries play an important role. Important role. Got to have them. Mm -hmm. Got to have them. And if and you know, and on the other side of the equation, a lot of the battery folks. You know, they 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 they're not positive on hydrogen, right. but the hydrogen people are positive on batteries because we see the whole picture and how it works and and how it's, they're all needed. Um, so it's it's important to have it all. Yeah. Okay. So let's throw up some of the pictures of uh, of things that we've done with you uh, and been with you. This is actually in Dayton, Ohio, at Chris's um, uh, facilities. He he actually has a, a huge facility there that used to be an auto dealership and is perfectly suited for a. Uh, his research and his production of his uh, equipment. And in the background are some of the folks that I work with from the Air Force Research Lab going on a tour of, of Chris's facility. So what's that equipment on the left there, Chris? Uh, that is our uh, 330 triple twin model. It is uh, a model that we actually designed uh, for uh, Blue Planet on the Big Island here in Hawaii. And uh, that unit there was uh, slated to go to Aruba. And so it's now been sent to Aruba. Okay. What's the next photo we got coming up here? So this is Chris with uh, another unit, and, and what is this unit doing? Uh, well, in um, 2000 and, uh, th let's see a bit, in 2012, uh, about October, we built the world's first hydrogen fueling station that's all in one. In a box. In a box. So on a, on a seven foot wide by four foot wide, uh, uh, seven foot by four platform, uh, seven foot tall. We've got uh, your hydrogen generator, which is the green uh, square thing down there, and then we've got the um, uh, your control cabinet, uh, your hydrogen uh, purification system. Above my arm there is uh, is the is the compressor, uh, and then to the right is a door that opens uh, that is a dispenser. So everything that you need to have fuel for a vehicle. Uh, is all in one package here, and it was the first first of its kind anywhere in the world. So, so this is essentially a miniature, like homeowner version of a hydrogen station. If yes. you happen to be independently wealthy and, and could afford to spend fifty or sixty or seventy or a hundred grand right. on a piece of equipment, so, right? But this was the fir one of the first then. Yep, this was the first okay. ever. Yep. All right. So this is kind of where you cut your teeth on on uh, scalability, right? Now what's the next photo we have coming up? Okay, so this is this looks very similar to what we just looked at. Is, yeah. Is this is on the Big Island? Yep. This is Blue Planet uh, in Puuba'a on the Big Island, and uh, Paul Pontio up there has been on the show several times. This is his unit, and if you see the little handle on the right, um, that's what Chris says. You open up, and it, it's got the hydrogen dispenser. So this is really um, kind of like your oil field, your oil pipeline, your ship to move the energy. The your refinery, refinery. <laughs> and everything, and the, and the tanker truck that brings your fuel to your gas station 
in a box that fits on a seven by four foot pallet. That's it. And so how, how elegant of a solution can you have? Like I explained to my, my guests at Hickam today, when you're in the production and manufacturing mode, every time you have to move something, it's wasted energy mm -hmm. and it's added cost for no value. Mm -hmm. If you can make the product where you use it, Absolutely. you save a huge amount. So when you start doing a business model, you have to take that into account too. You're actually using this equipment to make the energy, um, store it and dispense it to your vehicles in one spot, no right. transportation. Right. Okay, what's the next photo we got there, Zuri? This is also in the big on. Is that that same equipment that we saw in your factory? Yeah, that was that was the same model. It's a different electrolyzer, okay. but you know we made them we make them the same way every time. But uh, yeah, this was the first one that they got. So in Blue Planet got the very first uh, three thirty triple twin model we ever make. This is six stacks. It makes twelve kilograms a day of hydrogen production. Um, uh, those gray things to the left of the screen there are actually uh, purifiers. That's an early model of a purification system that we have uh, had back then. Um, so this was installed in uh, 2013, the okay. summer of 2013. And um, we've since, uh, it, it ran there for two years and it was still running great when we replaced it. Uh, but we made 63 improvements over that model from 2013. So we, we sent them a new, the newest upgraded model and they now have a newer, later model now. Yeah, so Hawaii's actually been a really great test bed for your company. Absolutely. I mean, I tell you what, the people of Hawaii have been so uh, open to this and, and, um, and so great at helping us, uh, you know, it's so important for a company like ours to have good feedback from people because, you know, we don't profess to be perfect. You know, we know that things are going to, we don't know what we don't know. <laughs> and that really any company that does that, you know, a new pioneering thing has no choice but to put it out there once you get to a certain level and, but just explain openly to people, hey, you know, we need you to tell us if you don't like this or you want it to do this instead of that. and it'd be great if it did this someday and mm -hmm. we need those ideas and that feedback and boy blue planet has just really been excellent uh, opportunity for us it was a real blessing yeah it's funny to look back at that picture number one the guy on the right is richard ha yeah. farmer on the big yeah. end with the good looking legs <laughs> he's standing there he's looking at the rest of the tour but in that space if you went to Blue Planet right now, you'd see all the blue lithium yeah, it's all different. batteries. It's and, all been changed. You know, everything's, and the electrolyzer's now outside. <laughs> yeah, it's out that, in another building yeah. now. <laughs> so this, and all that happened in like three short years. Yeah, real short time, yeah. So this, for me, this is a flashback to, to where we've come from three years ago yeah. and how much progress hydrogen has made here in Hawaii because yeah. there, is, there is so much going on and, and just so much exciting stuff happening. And I'm glad that you're... You're a big part of it with Blue yeah. Planet. Yeah, I know well, Paul's we feel excited. We feel real blessed to be with people like you guys and and Paul and we've just met so many really good people here. Uh, you know, the spirit is right here in in the, in, in in all of the state of Hawaii, and uh, the people really need this type of technology in a big way uh, because it is truly one of the ways, one of the for sure ways that the whole state can become energy independent and rely on itself only for its energy needs. Yeah, the, the folks in Hawaii, culturally, this is a big deal for them. Mm -hmm. They have a great respect for the land, the water, the air, mm -hmm. and the traditions that, that they don't want spoiled. Right. And this is a great answer. Right. Well, speaking of which, we've got some more exciting things happening right after the break, so don't go away. Join us back with Chris McWinney in a few seconds. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what's likable about science. Hi, I'm Ray Starling, and I am co-host for Hawaii's Wednesday afternoon, State of Clean Energy. And with me today is Leslie Cole Brooks, and she's going to tell you what's happening this month with our shows. Hi, everybody. I'm Leslie Cole Brooks, the Executive Director of the Distributed Energy Resources Council, and this month is the focus is on distributed energy resources. We just had a great show on smart grid technologies, and the rest of the month we're going to discuss storage, different strategies, microgrids, and then we're going to have live man and woman on the street from Verge. So it's really exciting, very informative, um, lively, and just worth doing. So. See you next Wednesday. Bye. Hey, welcome back to Stand the Energy Man with Chris McWinney from Millennium Rain. 
and I don't care how many times I type in my computer, I have to look at his business card because I cannot spell Millennium or <laughs> Rain. It's not R E I N. It's R E I G something. Yeah. Anyway, my my spell checker goes overtime with me on Millennium <laughs> Rain. But thanks for being here again, Chris. And what are some of the other projects that you're doing out in the world? Maybe we can bring some of the photos up that you that you pulled up uh, for Zuri. Sure. And yeah. Talk about what's going on and where where you're doing things in other parts of the world. Well, right here was a pretty wild expedition for us. Uh, we uh, installed a uh, one of our 330 triple twins with twin compressors on it. Uh, this unit does 12 kilograms a day and compresses it uh, at uh, 6,000 psi. Um, and then here it is being unloaded in Dubai. Um, at the, you can see the little sign back there on the on the trolley depot says the Dubai trolley and. Um, so uh, I think in the next picture, it actually shows a picture of the station and the trolley car. Um, that uh, There's a picture of the station. In the background there, you can see uh, the tallest right. building in the world. That's the Burj Khalifa. And uh, there's our station sitting right in front of it. And that was a real triumph for us to be able to do that. Um, and uh, so they have 18 kilograms of storage. And that hydrogen generator that you saw us unloading there, that actually went down in the basement of that building. And we had to lower that through a a pit, a hole, wow. to lower it down in. It was quite an extraordinary installation. <laughs> it was 104 degrees. They didn't have their air conditioning going, oh, and it wow. was really something. Uh, but uh, And we just recently got back from there a couple weeks ago. And so um, the next, uh, I don't know what's next on the thing. Oh, there, this the is the trolley. This is the trolley that it actually runs, that runs on hydrogen. So they have a, a, a fuel cell in the in there, and they have a set of lithium-ion batteries that uh, run uh, the, the the trolley, and they use the fuel cell as a range extender, um, so that they can run this thing for 16 hours. And there's about a four or five mile track that goes from the Burj Khalifa over around to the tallest uh, to the to the uh, largest mall in the world, and people can get off and different sites along the way. And and there's actually going to be two cars. Um, so this is a vintage. We have a partnership with a company in um, in California called TIG Modern Street Railways, and they manufacture these cars right there. And uh, we also have a system going to Aruba to do the same thing. So they're kind of a retro design, but they're yeah. brand new technology. Yeah, he's actually got a real sleek looking brand new one that looks like a really fast bullet train, and that one's going in cutter. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, yeah, he's got, he, he can make them anyway. How big of a fuel cell do they have in there, do you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a 17 kilowatt fuel cell. 17, that's, mm -hmm. that's not really huge. Mm -hmm. We have 30 watts in our trucks and stuff that mm -hmm. we do at Hickam. Mm -hmm. And then U.S. Hybrid just rolled out 150 kilowatt that they could use in a train. Oh, really? Really wow. impressive. So I'm trying to see if the city wants to venture into hydrogen fuel cell for yeah. the, the light yeah. rail we're to putting in here. Yeah. So this, this picture here was, uh, we, we, you see our fueling station there, all-in-one fueling station. We shipped it to uh, New Jersey for the grand opening of the world's first commercially produced solar hydrogen home. And um, this, uh, there's a solar field off, off camera here that you can't see, but uh, this lady purchased this and one of our partners, Mike Strisky, who you've had on your show before, um, he, has, uh, he, he, uh, he built this home and uh, Toyota brought out their Mirai and we brought our station. And as far as I can tell, this is the first time ever in the history of the planet that all of the things for a hydrogen world were at one place at one time. Uh, you had your home that was hydrogen, solar hydrogen, you had your car that ran on hydrogen, you had your fueling station that made the hydrogen and, and, and um, dispensed it all there at one place at one time. And so, and it all came off, off sunlight, so all photovoltaics? Yep, yep. That's why they call it solar hydrogen. That's so it's right. all clean, yep. no carbon, no carbon yep. footprint in this property at all because when you make your hydrogen from electricity using electrolysis, it's zero carbon. If you make your electricity off of so sunlight or other renewables like wind, there's zero carbon. When you burn it in a fuel cell, you're actually not burning it. When you, when you combine it in a fuel cell, you make water only and it's zero carbon. So when you start dealing with hydrogen as a system, it can be done completely clean. Right. It's zero carbon all the way from beginning to end. All you're, all you're kicking out the exhaust in that car is water vapor. That's it. And you can even put a small fuel cell in your house yep. if your car's not there right. and some batteries yep. and you're off the grid. Yep. So 
you're pretty familiar with with uh, Blue Planet Stunt on the Big Island. Why don't you talk about their their off the? Well, that's exactly what they've got. They've got uh, they've got a ranch that's well, thirty two or thirty five acres, and they've got the equivalent of ten homes in between buildings, different buildings, and and uh, they they clipped the cord from the power company completely. And for three years now, they've never been without power. And their all their point of war, their origin of energy is an 85 kilowatt solar array, and they're able to collect enough energy and divert it to either batteries or hydrogen, and and then they've built their own um, logic platform to monitor and 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 to turn things on and off at the right time to balance that energy and provide the energy that it needs for that entire ranch. And they're completely off grid and energy independent, and they're solar, hydrogen, and batteries working together. And they're not actually in an ideal place for solar. They I don't know. They're in a microclimate. They yeah. have a, they're right up against a big poo, and and they only get three to four hours a day of really good sun. I mean, by one thirty, usually two o'clock every day at the ranch, it's starting to get over. overcast. Yeah. yeah. So they're they're able with that eighty five kilowatts to charge the batteries that they spent overnight because mm -hmm. they do have the lithium iron batteries. Mm -hmm. there. They recharge those by late morning, mm -hmm. maybe even by 10 o'clock or so if it's been real sunny. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's all extra hydrogen, so yep. they make, I mean, all extra electricity, so mm -hmm. they make hydrogen yep. and store it at low pressure, right? Low pressure, yeah, and high pressure. They've got a combination, okay. but they're able to use uh, uh, propane tanks to store at low vol uh, you know, high volume, low pressure, and then, um, then they can compress from those up to where they could fuel a vehicle or a forklift or anything like that that has a fuel cell in it. Okay. They have 26 kilograms total of, fuel, of, of uh, storage. storage on site. Okay. Yeah. And what else do we have for photos there, Zuri? Well, this is, this is blue, speaking of Blue Planet, this is their upgraded system. Uh, so the other ones that had the green cells in it, and then this has the new purification system there to the left. So this is their new, and this is our injection molded cells. And what we've been working on now, once we got the stacks working, uh, then it was time to try to see what, we, what could we do to get the cost down. And um, so we spent about $130,000 on building an injection mold. Um, and um, we're now still trying to figure out the right chemistries, but um, this is our first injection molded cell stack set of six stacks. Uh, and it's now been running for uh, a little over a year now. And um, so this is at Blue Planet. This replaced the first one that you saw earlier. So as a rule of thumb, we kind of use 65 kilowatt hours for a kilogram of hydrogen as you know, our wag of how much electricity it costs mm -hmm. to make a kilogram. So mm -hmm. with your system, what's, what's the normal formula? Well, if you're talking about from the beginning of making it all the way through to compressing it and purifying it and storing it and dispensing it, the entire package on ours runs about 60 okay. kilowatt hours per kilogram. Okay, so it's, it's really close. Mm -hmm. How about cost of actually manufacturing the equipment? Well, our cost is, re you know, I, I haven't, you know, I've had a lot of people send me other people's you know, this is what they're saying they're charging us. And, and we typically come in between one-third and 50% of the cost of any other provider out there. There's multiple reasons for that. Um, you know, we, we, are, we have no debt as a company. Um, we own our facility that we produce this stuff out of debt-free as well. Um, uh, we have, um, we, we, we're in Dayton, Ohio. You can buy $135,000, for $135,000 you can buy a, 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 a three bedroom, two bathroom ranch style house. So it's, it's, you know, standard of living is very cost effective there. So people don't have to make a lot of money per hour. So labor costs are low, but we're not, but we're treating our people right, you know, mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, and. Um, and then you take uh, uh, the fact that, you know, the six or eight million dollars that we spent over the last, uh, uh, you know, 13 years developing this product that was research and development, we're not asking for that money back. We're saying that's in the past, forget about it. Mm -hmm. So where a lot of companies try to, uh, you know, incorporate their research and development costs into their cost of goods sold so that they can get a recovery on that, yeah. we're not doing that. That's so all of these right. things, and then, and then our cost of our product, we're, we're using a alkaline-based electrolyzer, and that is causing it to be much, much cheaper than a co company that's using a proton exchange that use platinum. 
Uh, on the screen right now uh, is uh, our, our latest system in Sonoma, California. This is a two enclosure system and it's got the hydrogen generator in the side of the, this first one and then the little uh, enclosure over to the right is the, uh, we're a 24 kilogram storage system that also has a dispenser, dispenser. in it. Okay. Yeah. And we have one more photo, I think. Yeah. There we go. Um, this is one of our smaller models for somebody's home, and it's a hydrogen generator only. This is just a one kilogram a day unit. Okay. So where do you see the market going? I mean, do you really see a good market for the home system? I do, but I think that the cars and the material handling and the um, uh, energy independent island nations um, and the... Um, things like the streetcars and, and buses and, uh, and telecom uh, to use hydrogen to make for telecoms. Uh, those, those will create a, um, a, a volume where the uh, uh, costs can come down uh, through economies of scale and that will eventually everyone will be able to afford to have their own hydrogen system and be off the grid and energy independent. And then the power is fed back to the grid the excess power and so we're diversifying our grid and it really helps us from a security standpoint as a nation great yeah so when you know we in Hawaii I have a relatively easy challenge of providing transportation infrastructure with hydrogen because if I put four or five stations in downtown Honolulu area proper we're good for a few more maybe 10 years mm -hmm. I mean by the time the market catches up mm -hmm. but on the mainland you know, there's some serious challenges. California uh, spends a lot of money, mm -hmm. government money, subsidizing mm -hmm. new stations. Mm -hmm. But if you're the only state that's doing it, yeah. how do you connect to Nevada and Well, Washington we have a plan for that. Okay. And uh, we're talking to some very, very well-known companies about putting uh, a thousand stations across the United States, 20 in every state in the next five years. That's awesome. And building a hydrogen fueling network starting with small stations and then being able to have scalable stations that you take that one out, put in the next size as more cars come in and then the next size as more cars come in and then actually being able to end up backfilling those stations with hydrogen made from large scale, megawatt scale, wind and solar fields um, and, and truck it into those locations. But well, as, as, the, <coughs> as those things develop, those uh, plans develop, We'll, we'll want to have you back and let you okay. talk about some more. But I wanted to save a few seconds to throw up the last photo we have. And it's really the reason you're here in Hawaii today. And that's to, uh, to help us put in our, our first outside the military fence line in Honolulu, the very first hydrogen station we're going to have in Honolulu. So there this is. is what Chris is here for. Um, it was delivered yesterday. Uh, we pulled it out of the container. So I got to live that dropping the equipment down the 100 foot shaft in Dubai <laughs> experience trying to get this equipment out of a container with one inch of space on either side yeah. and uh, Chris and Chris and I are actually wiring it up and hooking it up today and we hope to be making some hydrogen by the end of the day right in downtown Honolulu and the equipment primarily is going to help my, my team service the uh, and do maintenance on vehicles that we're working on but uh, I'm hoping that maybe we can have some folks drive by and, and maybe pick up some hydrogen with at HCAT. So, yeah. Chris, yeah. thanks for coming out, and thanks especially for delivering that station and, and You're coming welcome. out to help us set it up. And we're, we're going to be excited to hear from, from you in another couple months when more things can be let out of the bag, as, as we say, and, uh, yeah. and you can talk about some more things that are happening in the industry. Yeah, well, thank you so much for tr having trust and faith in us, and you know we'll do our best to yeah. maintain well, it. Well, one of those pieces of equipment's going out to Hickam. To That's be right. Here, to we be got here. another one to do yeah. next, right? Okay. Right. Well, thanks, Chris. Thank you. We'll have you back in a couple months, and right. thanks for joining us here on Stan Energy Man at uh, ThinkTech Hawaii, and we'll see you on my lunch hour next Friday. Aloha.